Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 26th of April. India's foreign minister says when rules-based order was challenged in Asia, Europe advised to do more trade. Sindhi's protest against China-Pakistan economic corridor highlight rights violation. And Sri Lanka begin talks with China on refinancing debt amid economic crisis. And now for all the details, India inaugurated the 7th edition of Raisina Dialogue on Monday, New Delhi, in which over 210 speakers from 90 countries are participating over the span of three days. In an interact session on Tuesday, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar reminded Europe that when rules-based order was under threat in Asia, the advice from the West was to do more trade. New Delhi, at least, is not giving that advice with regard to the Russia-Ukraine crisis. India's Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jayashankar on Tuesday reiterated New Delhi's position amid the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict and asked the Western countries not to forget other important issues in the world like Afghanistan. Speaking at Raisana Dialogue, a private geopolitical conclave in New Delhi, Jayashankar recognized that conflict in Ukraine is the dominant issue of the day, but also questioned the muted response from European countries on pressing issues in Asia. He was responding to a series of questions from his counterparts from Norway and Luxembourg, as well as by former Prime Minister of Sweden on the Ukraine crisis. I mean, when, when rules-based order was uh, under challenge in Asia, the advice we got from Europe is do more trade. At least we're not giving you that advice. Uh, the, and in terms of, uh, you know, Afghanistan, I mean, please show me which part of the rules-based order uh, justified, uh, you know, what, what the world did there. India is willing to step in to mitigate the impact of the ongoing war in Ukraine that has led to the emergence of several challenges, including the shortage of food stocks, Jashankar said. As the conflict continues to prolong in Ukraine, India on several occasions has clarified its position on the issue. It has called for a cessation of violence and the return of diplomacy and dialogue. And the newly formed Pakistan government has removed former Premier Nawaz Sharif's name from the exit control list and he has been issued a green passport, reports suggest. The PMLN Supremo, sentenced to 10 years in jail in 2017 on corruption charges, was allowed to travel to London for medical treatment in 2019. But he has remained there since then. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's name has been removed from the exit control list and he has finally been issued a green passport by the government, led by his younger brother Shahbaz Sharif, the country's newly elected premier. Reports suggest Nawaz Sharif's new passport with a 10-year validity was processed in the urgent category. His diplomatic passport had reportedly expired on February 16, 2021. The PMLN Supremo, sentenced to 10 years of jail in 2017 on corruption charges, was granted an eight-week bail on medical grounds in October 2019. And a month later, he was allowed to travel abroad for treatment for four weeks, but he has remained in London since then. Former PM Imran Khan had repeatedly lashed out at Nawaz, blaming him for lying about his health. He expressed in February that the government had made a mistake, by allowing the PMLN Supremo to travel abroad. Last week, PMLN leader Javed Latif had said Nawaz Sharif will be returning to the country after Eid, which is next month, to voluntarily face the judicial process in all cases against him. 
And moving on, a massive protest rally was held by Sindhi activists in Pakistan's Sindh province on Monday to oppose the China-Pakistan economic corridor and to raise the issue of enforced disappearances in the region. The protesters chanted anti-Pakistan slogan and raised the demand of Sindhudesh, a separate homeland for Sindhis. Scores of activists of J. Sindh Mutahida Mahaz or JSMM a Sindhi nationalist party held a massive protest in Sun City of Pakistan, Sindh province on Monday to oppose CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, and to raise the issue of enforced disappearances in the region. The protesters raised pro-freedom slogans and demanded Sindhu Desh, a separate homeland for Sindhis, blaming Pakistan of forcefully occupying the region. They accused that Pakistan army uses enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, and political repression as tool to silence voices of Sindhis. Shafi Burford, the exiled chairman of JSMM, in a tweet said, the Sindhi nation rejects the construction of China's naval base on the islands of Sindh. China's presence on the coast of Sindh is against the political, economic and strategic interests of the entire region, he said. Burford said Pakistan is a religious, extremist, unnatural and terrorist state. He appealed to the international community for independence of Sindh and demanded intervention to stop exploitation of their natural resources. The protesters also raised concerns over rising incidents of enforced disappearances in Sindh and forced conversions of minority Hindu girls in the region. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has begun discussions with China about refinancing its debt. The country's media minister, Nalaka Godaheva, said on Tuesday, as the island nation struggles with its worst financial crisis in decades. China's 3.5 billion US dollars of loans to Sri Lanka makes it the joint largest bilateral creditor. Sri Lanka has begun discussions with China about refinancing its debt, Nalaka Godaheva, Sri Lanka's media minister, said on Tuesday as Colombo struggles with its worst financial crisis in decades. Adding that discussions with Beijing were at an early stage, the minister said China has suggested to Colombo that it would prefer to refinance the debt. Now, since IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is willing to engage with Sri Lanka, the other countries are aware we have support, he said. However, reports suggest China's envoy to Sri Lanka, Chi Hong, on Monday told reporters about China's apprehension over Sri Lanka seeking an IMF bailout package, saying that such a move would impact ongoing credit talks with Beijing. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa, during a meeting with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi in January, had asked Beijing to help restructure debt repayments. China's $3.5 billion of loans to Sri Lanka make it the joint largest bilateral creditor. The ongoing economic crisis due to dwindling foreign currency reserves has triggered an unprecedented wave of spontaneous protests as an island nation of 22 million people struggles with prolonged power cuts and a shortage of essential including fuel and medicine. Sri Lanka this month also suspended payments on portion of its $51 billion in external debt. The IMF has asked Sri Lanka must tighten monetary policy, raise tax and adopt flexible exchange rates to address its debt crisis. Alarmed by the critical humanitarian situation in Afghanistan, UN human rights experts have called on the U.S. government to unblock the foreign assets of Afghanistan Bank to enable the unimpeded provision of humanitarian assistance to cover the basic needs of tens of millions of people in the country. The United Nations independent experts on Monday said the United States as well as the Taliban authorities is contributing to the suffering of women in Afghanistan through asset freezes. The United Nations and foreign governments including Washington have condemned moves by the Taliban to backtrack on women's rights commitments such as on girls' education in the months following their takeover in August last year. However, the statement by 14 UN independent rights experts also blamed the US government for making life worse for Afghan women through blocking billions of dollars of central bank assets made up in part of aid money for the country accumulated over decades. 
A U.S. State Department spokesperson said the statement contained serious mistakes and denied that U.S. actions had increased hardships faced by Afghan women under Taliban rule. The statement also blamed the Taliban's widening gender-based discrimination for deteriorating women's rights. The current humanitarian crisis in which 23 million or some 60 percent of the population are reliant on food aid is having a disproportionate impact on women and children, the statement added. Afghan central bank funds have been frozen since August 2021 when the Taliban took over and foreign forces withdrew. U.S. President Joe Biden issued an executive order in February setting wheels in motion to free up half of the $7 billion in frozen Afghan central bank assets on U.S. soil to help the Afghan people while holding the rest to possibly satisfy terrorism-related lawsuits against the Taliban. And a news from Bangladesh with Eid al-Fitr around the corner at the end of the fasting month of Ramadan. Dhaka residents have returned to the city's markets to shop with the Muslims' biggest festival following two years of COVID-19 restrictions. In Muslim-majority Bangladesh, Eid al-Fitr is due to be celebrated next week, subject to the sighting of the moon. Residents in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka have returned to the city's markets to shop for Eid al-Fitr following two years of COVID-19 restrictions. The festival of Eid al-Fitr marks the end of Ramadan, the holy fasting month which is currently underway and the beginning of the next lunar month called Shawwal. Shopping malls have been decorated with colourful lights preparing for a mass of shoppers ahead of the festival. Eid is traditionally a busy time for travel as people look to return to their family homes to celebrate. Prices of goods have hiked this year due to inflation accelerated by the Russia-Ukraine war, with some shoppers favoring markets over expensive shopping malls. We cannot uh, go the big market or shopping malls due to their products uh, rate is their range of products rate is very high and uh, we cannot purchase it due to money inflation rate uh, money inflation rate it has become because of after covid 19 it has been uh, increased so it is very tough to go to the market for us to buy something from there long queues were also seen at the dhaka railway station on monday with many lining up for hours overnight with little hope of securing a train ticket home. The traditional mass exodus from cities caused chaotic scenes at ferry ports and bus and train stations, with migrant workers and their families clamoring to secure limited places. Eid al-Fitr, the biggest festival in the Muslim calendar, is expected to be celebrated in Bangladesh next week, depending on the sighting of the new moon. The government will announce the exact date of the festival. Hundreds of flamingos, seagulls and other migratory birds have arrived in a wetland area in a suburb of India's western Mumbai city, leaving locals mesmerized. Several bird enthusiasts are also flocking to the site to catch a glimpse and click pictures of the winged visitors. A large number of migratory birds, including flamingos and seagulls, have flocked to sea woods, a wetland area in Nau, Mumbai, in India's Maharashtra state, as part of an annual phenomenon. The winged visitors have enhanced the beauty of the wetland, covered with mangroves and creeks, and are attracting locals who are flocking to the site to catch their glimpse and click pictures. Okay, this uh, migratory birds, uh, ponds, uh, pond heron, I don't know the name of all the birds, but they come every year here. And these are migratory birds. They feed on uh, <coughs> small insects. And here, flamingos in this season every year come, which are very beautiful to see. And these flamingos are being seen here. People use them as a tourist spot. And in this season, they are very happy to see them. Thousands of birds migrate to parts of India from northern latitudes to escape cold temperatures during winters. Some arrive during monsoons to breed and some are passage migrants that take a pit stop in the country around March-May during their journeys elsewhere. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.